Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. In this study, we're going to do something new. We are about ready to begin the 24th chapter of Matthew. And in that 24th chapter, the Messiah begins to speak about the end times, the last days. And we need to realize that that is something that has great significance. You see, the end times speak about a transition. A transition from this world as it has been going on to something different. And that is the establishment of the kingdom of God. And that kingdom should be of the utmost importance to you. Do you remember what Messiah did on the night before he was crucified? He gathered his disciples and he instituted something. He took the cup after supper. Traditionally, this is known as the cup of redemption. And he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. He speaks about a covenant of redemption. Now, we know he did that the night before Passover. And we know that Passover speaks of redemption, but that Passover that took place 3,500 years ago, was a physical Passover. It simply was a paradigm for something greater that would take place. And that is exactly what he was speaking about. How that he would lay down his life as the true Passover lamb and through the blood, not the blood of a typical lamb, but the lamb of God, the very son of God. And this blood would secure for us not just redemption in the physical sense, but an eternal redemption, a redemption that had kingdom implications. So when we speak about the last days, the end times, realize we're speaking about a transition away from this world with all the pain, all the suffering, the disease, the death, all the problems into the very kingdom of God, where the righteousness of God, the peace of God, the blessings of God, and the promises of God will be enjoyed by all who have experienced that salvation, that salvation and redemption that comes through the blood of the very Lamb of God, Messiah Yeshua, that is Jesus Christ. Take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Matthew and chapter 24. Now, I mentioned that this chapter has great significance and specifically, it has relevance for the end times. And you need to be careful that you're not like many people. They hear that subject, the last days, the end times, and they're not that interested. They'll say, well, I'm a believer I'm going to be in the kingdom of God. In the end, everything's going to work out okay. So so what difference does it make? These things are confusing. They're not pleasant to hear about. They can be rather distressing. So I just don't want to focus in on that. That is a very foolish and disobedient attitude. Why? Because in the midst of these difficult times, and they are approaching, We are called to bear testimony. We are called to live obediently in a way that manifests our faith. And in these difficult times that are coming, be a light. Give revelation to others. Reveal the truth. Let them see that the one in us is different than the one in the world and be a source of revelation for others to see the truth 
and experience that same salvation, that same eternal redemption. So the end times, if you're ready, if you have prayed to be ready, it can be one of the greatest times for ministry to impact others with the truth of God so that they can as well be recipients of the promises of God. Do not ignore the biblical teaching, the prophetic revelation concerning the last days, the end times. So look again at this 24th chapter. We're going to see that it's called by many the Olivet Discourse. Now, all of it because we're going to see that most of what takes place in chapter 24 has to do with Messiah being just there on the Mount of Olives. And what was he doing? He was teaching. He was giving revelation. Therefore, because it took place on the Mount of Olives, and he was teaching the Olivet Discourse. And what he says it has great relevance, I believe, for our generation. There are signs, prophetic indicators, that we are moving rapidly to this time of transition. And we need to be people that realize that this time of transition is important to God. And what's important to God should be important to you. Now, I made mention that Messiah, on the evening before he was betrayed, that he was crucified, he gathered his disciples together, and he took that cup, that cup of, of redemption, the third cup after the supper, and after partaking of it, he said something. He says, I will not taste the fruit of the vine, meaning that, that drink, that wine, until he says, I drink of it anew in the kingdom of God. Now, biblically, wine is synonymous with joy, a great joy. Wine accompanied celebrations. And what he was referring to was that great banquet, that, that wedding banquet of the Lamb, whereby he is going to right now wait until that event takes place, a kingdom event, when once again, it will be a time of great joy, great gladness. So he's waiting. That time is important. And therefore, if you have the mind of Messiah, if you're seeing things from his vantage point, his perspective, then the kingdom of God and those events that's going to bring it about, we need to know what they are, so that we can function faithfully, that we can do what is pleasing to him, that when we go and stand before him, he will be well pleased with you and me because we rightly behaved in the midst of this transition. That's what our call is. This is why Messiah is going to give this revelation. Now, before we look at verse one of chapter 24, we need to remember what we concluded with last week, and that was Messiah. He was looking upon the city of Jerusalem, and he had a heavy heart. He was weeping over the spiritual condition, and what did he say? He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wanted to gather you up, and he's going to do that. This is a prophetic promise from God. And what does it mean, gather you up? He is going to bring the people back to the land. And you know what? He's already doing it. That change is going to happen. But remember what he said, what we studied. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wanted to gather you up like a mother hen gathers up her chicks but you were not willing. What does that mean? Within Israel, in regard to Yeshua, there was a spirit of rebelliousness. And there's going to be something that brings a change because he says, I will not come, and this is 
in regard to him returning to gather up Israel and establish that kingdom. He's speaking uniquely and specifically to the Jewish people. He says, I will not come again until you shall say, and he quotes, quotes from Psalm 118 where it says, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that is a call to Messiah, an invitation for him to come. Now, they weren't interested in him the first time. But in the last days, those end times towards the end of Daniel's 70th week, Israel is going to cry out those words. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And what will bring about this change? Very simply, it's going to be what Jeremiah revealed in Jeremiah chapter 30. When he says there will be a time of trouble, of tribulation for Jacob, for the Jewish people. And it's going to be that difficult time. And by the way, prophetically, biblically, it is going to be, and this grieves me to say this, it is going to be the worst time of persecution ever. As Daniel says in Daniel chapter 12, the worst time of, of persecution since there was a nation, a nation of Israel. Worse, if we can imagine it and we don't want to, even worse than the Holocaust. And therefore, we need to understand what's going to happen so that we can share that message. As Paul commands in Romans chapter 1, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, meaning the non-Jew, the Gentile. Paul tells us that we should, if we're going to be biblically correct, that we should have an emphasis on sharing the gospel first to the Jewish people in order that through faith, that same faith that hopefully you have, that same faith will bring them out of this world prior to that time of Jacob's trouble, that they can avoid this time of great suffering. But in the end, we know something. We know that in the end, Messiah is going to be faithful to bring about the kingdom of God. What are those events that's going to happen to bring that kingdom establishment? Well, that's exactly what we're going to look at in our study. Let's begin. Matthew 24 and verse 1, we read here, And Yeshua went forth. He departed from the temple. So he was in that temple. He comes out, and notice what it says. And his disciples came before. The implication? They came before him to show him the buildings of the temple. Now, I would highlight, I would underscore that last phrase where it says, the buildings of the temple. We're not just speaking about the temple, but also additional buildings. And, and what are we referring to? Well, Yeshua, undoubtedly, he was speaking about those other buildings on the temple mount, not just the place where that holy place was, and the Holy of Holies, what's usually thought of as the temple and the courtyard, but also on the Temple Mount, there was the Sanhedrin. And the Sanhedrin, along with the formal structure of the temple, it says here that the disciples were pointing these things out. And they were a beautiful, a very, very beautiful set of buildings. And notice Messiah's response. Look now to verse 2. But, but in contrast to what they were pointing out, perhaps what they were thinking, Yeshua said to them, do you not see all of these, all of these buildings? And what were they built with? Stones. And therefore he says, do you not see all of these? Truly I say to you, and he uses Two words, different words, that mean no. 
And its implication is it's an emphasis. He says, surely not one stone, not one. That's the implication with the double negative. Not one stone upon another stone will be left that is not, and he uses that same double negative to emphasize this, that will not be cast down. So what is Yeshua doing in this verse? He's prophesying. He is telling the disciples, you see these beautiful buildings, these buildings that took 40 years to, to build up, that, that everything was in place, but he's prophesying that they're all going to be cast down. Not one stone will be left upon another. Now, what is he prophesying? He's prophesying concerning the destruction of the second temple that took place in 70 AD. So here's a very important hermeneutical clue. Hermeneutics is the law of, of interpreting the Bible properly. So we need to ask yourself, what was the purpose that Yeshua, that he was speaking about this event 40 years later, the destruction of the temple, the destruction of the city of Jerusalem, and the beginning of that war against the Jewish people from the Romans that would lead to the longest, the most bitter of the exiles of the Jewish people. What was he saying? Here's the message. In the same way that Yeshua, that he was 100% accurate, his prophecy was perfectly fulfilled exactly what he said. The reason why that's important is this. In a few minutes, he's going to begin to speak about truly the last days, the end times. See, there is a false teaching going on today that what Yeshua speaks about in Matthew 24 is all about the past. That is false. This is not what one can conclude, and we'll see this when we study it from this chapter. You can't conclude that. Only he alludes briefly right here in this verse about what took place over 1,900 years ago in the year 70 AD with the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. And what he's saying is this, in the same way that I will be right, and he was, about not one stone being left upon another that's not cast down. And by the way, you can come to Jerusalem today and you can go to what's called the Southern Excavations in Jerusalem, the Davidson Center, and still, you can see these stones that were up on the Temple Mount and how they had been cast down. You can see them still today. He was right, accurately described what would take place 40 years later. And that's all to give us the hermeneutical clue that what he's going to say about the last days, he will be equally right, perfectly accurate, in regard to what he says concerning the last days. So that's the implication of what he speaks about in verse 2. Now let's look at verse 3. In verse 3, there's a change of location. And that tells us whenever there's a change in location, there's also going to be a change in the subject, the emphasis of what he's going to speak about. And notice what we read in verse 3. But he sitting, and this is Yeshua, he's sitting on the Mount of Olives. Now, remember, this is the Olivet Discourse. It takes place on the Mount of Olives, and this gives us a contextual clue. Because the Mount of Olives, biblically, prophetically, are related to the end times. For example, in Zechariah chapter 14, we read about how in the end of those last seven years, Messiah is going to return. 
He is going to bring that last blow of God's wrath upon the world when he, and don't miss this, when he delivers the Jewish people, when he battles for Israel and brings victory. See, Israel is going to be in that difficult time, what we've already referred to, Jacob's trouble. And Messiah is going to come, and even though this is going to be a bitter time for Israel, for the Jewish people, when we learn that two-thirds of those who are alive will be perished in this, this Jacob's trouble, two-thirds of the Jewish people, but that one-third, they will witness as Messiah promised. Where did he promise this? In the book of Acts. He said to his disciples at that same location on the Mount of Olives that he is going to come back and he is going to restore the kingdom to Israel. And when he ascended, an angel came and spoke to the disciples and said, in the same way, in the same way that he ascended from the Mount of Olives, he is going to return. He descended up in the air. He is going to return back from the air. And he is going to return. And what's going to happen? Well, in Zechariah 14, I've already alluded to it. When his feet land upon the Mount of Olives, that mountain, the Mount of Olives, is going to be moved. It is going to split and move. And we've already talked about how that moving up that mountain, the Mount of Olives, is going to take place and bring about a change, a kingdom change in this world. And therefore, it's for that reason that he was at the Mount of Olives. Again, verse 3, and he is sitting upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples, they came before him privately saying, Say to us, and they have three questions, three very important questions that they want to ask. Now, they say, when will these things be? Tell us when these things will be, the destruction of Jerusalem. And just like Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, there's going to be a war against Jerusalem in the last days so they say first of all question one when will these things be number two and what is the sign of your coming now i would underline that word coming it's the greek word parousia now parousia is a word for coming or arriving and it can refer to two things and it's not an either or it's both. It can refer to his coming as in the blessed hope. What we read about in Titus chapter 2 and verse 13 when Messiah is going to return and he is going to gather up believers, only believers, Jewish believers, Gentile believers, all believers in that gospel message. And the scripture's clear. He's going to do that before the wrath of God begins. So the word parousia can refer to the rapture, the blessed hope, and equally there are times when it can refer to the second coming. Realize the second coming and the rapture are not the same event. As we study more in this 24th chapter, we'll see the difference between them. One, the parousia of the rapture, that coming of the rapture, is for believers but the second coming it is for Israel to bring about Israel's deliverance and let me give you another scripture first Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 13 with the second coming the Saints that's you and me those who had taken part in the rapture we are going to be coming with Messiah returning back to this world in order to as the book of Revelation chapter 20 says, in order that we might rule and reign with him during this millennial kingdom, that first kingdom that he's going to establish when he comes back at the second coming. And we're going to see that Matthew 24 speaks 
about both of these events. So they want to know what is the sign of your coming? And then the third question they ask, and the end of the age. Now, that word end is going to be very important. When we look at it, you do a good study of it. It's speaking about bringing things to a conclusion. And that's what Messiah is going to do. So the concept, the end, is very important. But in order to understand such things as the rapture, the second coming, having a right perspective for the last days, we need to always ask ourselves, what end is being referred to in this, in this chapter? That word end appears several times. And it can refer to the end of the church age. That is going to take place with the rapture. Or it can refer to the end of this world as we know it. And the establishment of the kingdom of God. And we're going to see that Messiah speaks clearly. He is going to speak accurately. Revealing to us truth concerning the end. The end of the believer's on this world and also the end of this world as we know it in its normal state its natural state which is stained by sin and this world is crying out paul says for redemption we're going to see the end of this world in its current state and it experiencing redemption which is the establishment of the kingdom of god and one of the things we're going to see as we continue next week is that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, he is going to warn disciples, not just those disciples that were with him, but especially, and I want to emphasize this, especially the disciples who are going to be alive in that time period of the last days, the end times. And again, that may very well mean you and me. He is going to warn us repeatedly, do not be deceived. There are going to be many individuals, false prophets, false teachers, false messiahs, that are going to appear to be believers. They are going to speak positively about Yeshua, but they are instruments of deception. They are going to bring delusion. So this study, so important we're going to go through this 24th chapter very carefully because of the important truth that it contains well we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org again to find out more about us please visit our website loveisrael.org there you will find articles and numerous other lectures by baruch these teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.